Welcome Beth Zink, the Director of Career Development with the Center for Career Exploration and Success. Uh, welcome Beth, thanks for taking the time. Great, thanks Joe. Thanks to everyone for joining us today. I'm, I'm so excited that we were able to connect with you about some career information. Uh, normally I don't get to interact with families and parents except for orientation. So this is kind of a, a new treat that I hope will be helpful to you and to your students as well. Um, I'm going to go through some information. As Joe says, we'll take questions at the end. So I'm happy to answer any of those questions. have to say, first off, glad to have your student back on campus. It was getting a little quiet here in Oxford. So this morning, it was nice to see students out and about going to class. Um, and so it, it, spring semester is also special just because even first years come back kind of knowing what's going on. So it's, it's a a good semester to be on campus. Um, I do think, though, it's a semester that seniors uh, who are graduating specifically in May can experience that that stress, that added stress. They want to finish classes, have some fun, uh, but also really need to plan for what's coming in May. And so that, that added stress. And then other students um, may not be thinking about summer, but uh, may be starting to hear those words like, what are you doing this summer? Do you have an internship? Which also can create some stress. So when we decided to place these presentations, we thought first and foremost, we want to help you Here's some information about students who are searching for experiences that, that are coming soon. Um, and uh, um, I, I, hope it, I hope it's helpful to you, as I said, and to your student. So um, this image that you're seeing now may look familiar. We do share it in orientation because it kind of is our foundation to describe our Miami career community and all of those who support students through their career process and into their career path. And, you know, I, I do think this is one of the things that we lean heavily on um, to help our students because we have a lot of resources, a lot of people here to help, and we want them to know wherever they are, whatever space they sit in, that there are people around them, um, not just the Career Center who can assist them. Which brings me to our session today. Um, I think it was last spring where we we decided to do something a little different. We we call it our ice cream survey. And a couple of staff hopped on our golf cart, took some ice cream in a cooler out on campus and said, hey, students, we've got some questions for you. Have some ice cream and, and tell us a little bit about um, this information that we want to know. And one of the questions was, who are you talking to about careers? Who are you having career conversations with? Um, and I, I think that's, um, you know, a, a really important question to ask. We, we knew that we might be a little hurt that it wasn't going to be us at the top of the list, um, but we, we wanted to find out, wanted to be sure who they're talking to. And, you know, they are talking to, number one, family and parents. Um, that's who they're having their career conversations with most often. And two, uh, we're, look, we're talking about faculty um, uh, and academic advisors comes up too. So what we decided to do is be really intentional about providing some additional career information to those groups, not to overwhelm or make you an expert by any means, but to give you enough information that you can be maybe supportive of your student in this area uh, when we talk about uh, talk about careers. So that's kind of where this is, has all developed. So I hope, again, that this is right on target and I and will answer questions later that are individual. So moving on. Um, our next slide starts with one of our key words, um, explore. And I think um, to let you know, and I'll show you our website a little bit later, but we have three stages that students kind of move and gravitate toward as they're going through the career process, explore, prepare, and connect. So with explore, I want to hit it just a little bit because that's not really the topic of today, but I did want to uh, mention this. Um, when students are looking for jobs and internships and experiences, um, exploring kind of comes with that, you know, looking for what do I, what am I interested in? What looks good? What do I have the skills for? Um, what organizations or employers do I, I value and gravitate towards? So all of that does happen. And I've, I've just listed a few things on the slide. Reading job postings is, is one that naturally they're going to be doing as they're applying to things, um, being able to pick out things that they like and don't like. Um, certainly networking, which I'll talk about more in detail a little bit later, um, even just like looking through LinkedIn, which is another so source that we really encourage students to use and uh, for a number of different reasons, which um, I think is helpful for them in exploring their options. And then our website. 
I really think our website has a lot of different resources um, available 24-7 to students that that can be helpful in a lot of different areas. So I will talk a little bit about that as well. Um, But just to let you know, our next presentation um, with parents and family, I think it's coming at the end of February, um, is going to be supporting your student in their exploration of career options. And there's so many out there that I think it's helpful just to kind of help students navigate what are their options? What are they What are they interested in? What do they have skills for? Um, and, and, and that's the next presentation. So for this presentation, we're going to kind of hope that they have some idea of what they're looking for um, and have already done the explore. And we're just going to fo- focus a little bit more on the, the search uh, side of things. All right. So before I go into uh, some some specific details, I do want to say a word about internships. Um, This is a word that for students who are looking for an experience or needing some experience can cause some stress. Uh, We do encourage internships. Many programs require internships, um, but it's not the only way students can get experience. I've got internships versus experiences. Really what they're getting from an internship is experience. So there are other ways that students can seek that out. And so that's that's an important thing for them to know, because I do think if they have a roommate who now has an internship this summer and they think, now do I have to have an internship? What if I can't find one? There's a lot of that stress that builds up. So I kind of wanted to just explain that not all career related experiences um, are called internships. Most of them could be called part time, volunteer, um, you know, um, even some externship. That's a kind of a small job shadow. So there's a lot of different things that, that they can look at. Um, but I think anything they do that's career related um, is, is helpful, is valuable. This is something else to you know. Some industries lack internships. I use those with quotes. They have other experiences, but maybe the actual internship from like, for example, medicine and law, um, those are both usually fields that the internships are saved for med students and law students. So we have to help those students find other things that build that experience that that actually builds their resume and leads to the other things down the road. Um, I I love when students get excited about going home for a, a summer job that they've been doing for a while. This is absolutely great. It can still give great experience. Usually what we're telling those students is if you've got that summer job you're returning to, maybe ask if you can be involved in some other opportunities. Uh, For example, can I sit in on some interviews for new staff or can I help train some of the new staff just to get a little bit more of that career skill? So it shows consistency. It shows that you're valued by an employer, but it also allows you to get a little bit more skill development. So that's another great way to get experience. The next item is kind of a new way for students to get experience, and that's uh, we call them gigs or project-based internships. And these are basically projects that employers want students to complete for them in a certain amount of time, usually um, hours. It'll say this project might take 20 hours, this might take 40 hours, this might only take five hours, but it gives them these short-term projects where they're building career skills, earning money building that on the resume, and that leads to being a more experienced candidate for the internship next time. So I'll show you that site as we go through as well. And then good old volunteering. It does not provide the financial support that we we like, but it can be very valuable as far as gaining experience and meeting people in the field. So if you've got that great summer job to go back to or you need a new summer job to get that money, great. But is there a way to fit in some really good career-related volunteering? And those are some things that really act as as an internship. It, it builds those skills, it builds that experience. So if that stress comes up about internships, know that there is more out there than just something called an internship. All right, moving right along, we're going to go to our next uh, stage. Remember, it was explored, now it's prepare. Um, we think students really need to prepare in many ways, but too specific that sometimes they need resources to help support them with are their documents and interviewing skills. So documents, I'm talking cover letter, resume, um, sometimes a thank you note, um, all of those types of things. And I list first our website as a good resource. We do have examples uh, of how to start a resume and then examples of various types of resumes. Same with the cover letter, kind of walking them through those sections. So they can get that information right off of our website 24-7. 
The next resource I'm listing is VMock. It is a very cool and inter- artificial intelligent uh, platform that scores uh, resumes. And so a student can actually upload a PDF of their resume and it will give them a score. It will tell them not only if there's some typos or maybe some uh, spacing that's off, it will suggest different words. Maybe they've used a word too many times. It will let them know the skills that they're highlighting and other skills that maybe they need to include in that. It will alert them if they have not put in the correct uh, degree or if they're missing some dates. It's a great tool that, again, students who are up late, maybe studying, What's some real quick resume help? If they use that tool, it's it's very helpful um, and very easy to use. Students really actually uh, enjoy using it. Of course, you get a score. That always makes it kind of fun to beat the score. Uh, Next, I mentioned our drop-in peer career coaches. They are available each day during the week. The hours are on the website. Students can pop in for a 15-minute quick, hey, do you mind checking my resume? Or can you give me some feedback on this cover letter? easy to to meet with one of our peer career coaches. They can also schedule an appointment with one of our peer career coaches um, during those times as well. But your student also has a career advisor. We have career advisors for each of the colleges, all the different majors, um, depending on what college or program they're in. When they schedule that through Handshake or if they want to drop by the career center to schedule that, those uh, those advisors will pop up so that they'll get uh, the career advisors that are more familiar with their their programs um, to help them build these documents or review these documents, whatever they may need at that point. Now, interviewing, um, I think, is one of those things that usually people, students really don't want to practice. It's kind of painful. Um, but practice does make perfect or at least make better and really reduces some stress. So we really encourage students to practice that interviewing. Some students are it come by it naturally. Um, and, and yet I still think that practice is very important. A little tweaking, a little um, focus on some of the things they're mentioning as far as their skill sets, things like that. So it's helpful for everybody. But there's also a group of students that interviewing is going to be uncomfortable. And so the more they get practice with it, the more they're going to to feel confident and come across that way in the interview. So two things I want to share um, that I think are very helpful. Big interview is another resource on our website just like VMOC, where students can go on, uh, create a a little profile, and then practice virtual interviewing. So there's actually a recording of someone asking them a question. They'll record their answer, then they can look back at it and play it through. They can even ask someone here in the Curse Center to look through them and give them some feedback too. So it's a great first step for people who are a little uh, nervous about that, about actually having a, a mock interview or an interview in person. So that's that's great practice. And again, they can do that 24-7 as well. We also have a very robust mock interview program. Various days throughout the year are designated for certain industries or majors. We have an all-major mock interview coming up this February and kind of getting ready for our, our career fairs. So anyone can sign up, but students can sign up for a, a mock interview all throughout the week um, and have that one-on-one practice with our trained mock interviewers to, to give them that experience and then provide that helpful uh, feedback. It's one of those things, we do this sometimes in classes too, and it's one of those assignments that they usually are not looking forward to, but afterwards they're like, that was really helpful. That really made me feel much more comfortable moving forward. So the interviewing skills, definitely something to, to help prepare them. Now we're at our third stage, Connect. This is where we want p- students to connect with various people in the field, Uh, networking resources that can help them. A couple of them that are are also resources. This Parker Dewey that I've got listed is the resource for the micro internships I mentioned. And again, I'll show you the website so you can easily find the resources. But it's, it's basically a site that students can log into create a brief profile, and then search through all of the the micro internships that are available and apply. Most of them are remote. um, And again, they sometimes are are hour-based. So it's easy to say, can I do a five-hour project? Um, And that they can do that anytime during the week that they want to. Or is it something that might be able to supplement a summer job uh, with a few career-related things? So great, great site um, that students can use. Handshake, if you have not heard your student talk about Handshake, this would be a great thing to ask. Hey, do you know about Handshake? This is our career management platform we use for everything career. This is where our internships and full-time jobs are put. 
This is where all of our career fairs are so they can see who's coming to the career fairs. These are all of our events are listed there um, so they can apply to things directly from their their, um, profile. And then this is also where they can make an appointment with their career advisor. So it's really a handy thing to get used to. They can put the app on their phone so they can use it anytime. Um, But Handshake is really kind of the starting place for students in any kind of search. We rely, going back to our, our career community model, we rely on our Miami alumni. Very loyal, very helpful. Uh, we connect students with them all the time. And they also provide some jobs that they post in Handshake for our students to apply to. So again, very helpful uh, resource for us. Mentioned LinkedIn. And then networking. I, I will talk a little bit about that and then career fairs. So I think I see these things as the, the main ways we can help students engage in networking or connecting with people. Um, and some are, are, you know, warm and fuzzy, like the alumni, I think that's warm and fuzzy. And then and all of the our employers are, just love coming to campus, as you can see by the picture. We have a lot of employers that come to campus. And I think once you get over the, the initial shock of, I have to talk to someone that I don't know, it becomes easy and actually can become really fun for the students as well. So a word about networking. Uh, um, we, I try to try to use other words for this because it does kind of makes students a little nervous. It does sound very professional and, you know, work-like. It's it's really just connecting. It's having a conversation. Um, and we have a couple different ways that we, we help students, in addition to the career fairs, meet employers. One um, is, I've listed under our spring events, the CAS night is basically the College of Arts and Science networking night. And Really, all students are welcome to this. Um, CAS, or College of Arts and Science, basically uh, means that the employers that are going to be attending this networking night are open to all all majors. Um, So it really is a kind of an inclusive uh, networking event that all students can come to. But that is actually the night of uh, the first career fair. We We are doing an athletes night. Uh, which will be a networking night. Again, athletes have very different schedules, so it's it's important to kind of help them as well. They don't always, uh, they're not always available during the, the the other networking nights. And I listed Elevate too. Elevate's a great um, program where students, all students can attend to learn more about um, finding, identifying, and enhancing uh, workplaces that are inclusive um, and equitable and have a, d- a diverse uh, feeling to them. So that's a great event that that comes up right in early March. And it's a, uh, employers who come are very dedicated to, um, you know, talking to students about how their work environments are inclusive. And um, then on the other side, the individual activities, you know, not everybody can make it the big events and sometimes the, the big events are, are can be overwhelming to start networking and so there's some individual activities that we encourage students to think about i listed family and friends this is one of those things where you know we talk tell them talk to people tell them what you're looking for what you'd like to do after graduation um to to get the word out even if your neighbor is not in that field maybe they have a cousin that is and they're like oh my cousin is in that field i can kind of connect you so really just kind of letting people know uh what's out there and and you know there are some um you know, instances where students are doing things that maybe you're not familiar with, you don't know much about the industry, they've kind of gone off on a different uh, route, but maybe just sharing again with people that you know that this is what your your student is interested in might create some of those warmer connections. But under family and friends, what I've got listed, the MAC, and we call it the Miami Alumni Connect. And this is where alumni have specifically signed up to help students with career advice, whether it's checking their resume, um, helping them with um, you know, possibly learning about the industry. Oftentimes, they're very. Uh, they also check the box of you know introducing students to my network, which is a great way for students to expand their network and learn more about how to job search in that network. So this is one of those things we you know it's it's on the website. Students can 
create a little student profile and then search through the alumni that are on there and maybe look for people that are that, that have their academic background or maybe that they're in um, a certain city um, or maybe they're in an industry that they're interested in. Any of those reasons that they want to connect, a student can reach out. There's a little template in there. They just click send um, and that immediately connects them with an alum who can meet with them maybe through Zoom um, or maybe in person if it works out, but just to kind of build that relationship with people. And I think that's another warm connection that we have. LinkedIn, if you're on LinkedIn, it's used for many different things, but uh, it, we do have a way to show students how to connect with alumni through that. And um, I, I do an activity with students. That I love, I call it career stalking for the lack of a better term, but basically just go on and see what are people doing? Uh, this is, you know, my major is history. What are history people doing out there? And um, what are, who are they working for? What's their career path look like? Just to kind of get some ideas. So um, I, I think it's a great uh, a networking tool as well to kind of, um, you know, uh, find people that can help possibly with your, your career path. So I did mention the career fairs, and that's kind of what has sparked this, the timing of these uh, webinars is that our career fair season starts, um, you know, this month or February, sorry, February, February 20th. And we have several different career fairs, but I wanted to kind of let you know, this might have been something, again, you saw at orientation, but we really are very proud of the number of, of employers that recruit our students. We have great students. Um, we, we have a lot of employers that want to come meet them post jobs here, want to be in the class and get to know them. I mean, they, they really do like Miami students. We have almost double the number of employers that most universities have come to their career fairs. And I think that says a lot about the opportunities. There are a lot of opportunities for students to get out there. And so I do encourage students, even if they're not sure that there's anything in a fair that they want to even you know, explore, to maybe give it a try because there's no better way to meet with an employer than face-to-face -face in a career fair. It's not the only way, but it is a great way. And I preface that with some students because career fairs are not for everybody, um, as, you know, as far as what they're looking for and their stipulations, but it is a great way to immediately connect with, with employers. I think that's important. So, um, the this this slide talks a little bit about our spring career and internship fairs. They begin starting February 20th and actually Right now they go to March. We have one coming up in April that I'll, I'll mention. That QR code takes you right to our website. I'm going to go ahead and show you, take a little break here and show you uh, our website um, to kind of give you a, a, a little taste of that. So the career fairs, let's just take a look at that. Um, if you go to the career site, of course, it's going to be slow for me today. I think that's just all the students are back on campus using Wi-Fi in the building or something. I don't know. So on the, I'll tell you what's on that page. Oh, here. Oh, that's not good. Sorry about that. We have been doing virtual things for how many years now? And for whatever reason... <laughs> But there's still problems every time you go on it. We'll try this again. But our, our list of career fairs, they start on the 20th and we have like an all majors uh, internship and career fair to kick it off. So all students can attend that. The day after that, we have our career for the common good. And those are employers that are geared more towards nonprofits, government positions, that type. Here we go. Um, so students can see um all the different ones. Here's the first one coming up and the careers for the common good, which is the very next day. Uh, they can go to both. Certainly don't have to stay for the whole thing, pop in for a little bit, one, the other, but all of the employers that are attending these fairs are in handshake. So they can go and see who's going to be there. Who do I want to talk to? What's going to make the most use of my time? We do have later in uh, February, the virtual and in-person architecture and design fair. And then the teacher job fair is March 1st. There's also another one that's being planned in April called Spark Fest. It's more of an expo for our um, College of Creative Arts students. Um, so there's all these different large events where students can meet with employers, which is, is, uh, is exciting to provide that, but we just need to let them know when these are and where these are. 
Um, just to li- give you another visual of our career website, here's where I was talking about those three stages of career development that students kind of rotate through. Explore. So if they're in the exploring phase, here are those resources that might fit more in there. Prepare. Here's where you can click on resumes and cover letters and see those examples and actually have you know templates to show them how to kind of work through that. And then connect. This is where, again, you'll see internships, gigs, those project-based resources. If you click on resources, though, this is that long list of VMOC and Big Interview and Handshake and other various resources that students have uh, access to that can really help with their, their job search. Oh, my goodness. Try that again. Um, there we go. So again, the resources page, the three big ones at the top, again, Handshake, VMOC, and Big Interview, that's where they can log in. We have a nice little ad right below that on the Miami Alumni Connect, so they can watch a little video and learn more to set up their profile to join that that alumni community. That's very helpful. And then again, a number of different resources down here that they can look at and see if they might be helpful. There's Parker Dewey again, which is the project-based one as well. So again, that resource page seems to be very, very helpful um, for students to just kind of log into things available 24-7. Um, I was going to put that website up for you in the chat. Do that in a minute. So, again, if nothing else, you can just send students to our website and let them know that the Career Center is for all majors. Um, that would be great and helpful. But let me let me go ahead and put this in for you in case you want to save this in the chat. I put it in already for you, oh. Beth. Thank you, Joe. Happy Appreciate to you. All right. Okay. So let me get back here to my last slide. There we go. So next steps. Um, I would ask that maybe you have some type of career conversation with your student. This can be um, just sharing your day at work. This can be asking them you know, what, you know, how are your classes going? And then it kind of snowballs into, so what do you think you're going to do this summer? Or have you given some thought to what you're doing after graduation or you've made some progress? Maybe they started over J term and maybe they've made some progress on their resume. Are you thinking about going to a career fair? Do you know about all the career fairs coming up? Just something to kind of get them um, talking a little bit about that um, so that they can, you know, maybe, ask some questions or maybe share some other things. And I think in those conversations, I would ask that you listen for cues that might be helping them. You know, are they saying things like, oh, well, the career fair, that's that's for business students. I hear that a lot. You've just seen all the different career fairs. They're for all students in all different areas. And there are other things besides career fairs that maybe would be helpful to them too. So, um, or maybe I, I hear this too. Students think that the career center is just for business students. Not the case. We work with students as soon as they hit campus. So first years all the way through graduation, all majors, all issues, all years, all, all industries. So those types of cues, uh, maybe just giving them that that little nudge to to maybe look on our website or to maybe, you know, maybe it would be helpful for them to sit down with a career advisor and really kind of map out what they're thinking. And if they're not thinking anything, maybe we can help them begin to formulate that if that is still something that they need to do. Because it is going to be helpful for them to start this process sooner rather than later. We do have some students that, you know, will come in and say, oh, I'm going to wait till after I graduate to start the job search. And, you know, if that's the the schedule that they can follow, that is, there's nothing wrong with that. However, I would say that the sooner they start the sooner they're going to find something, um, they're, the sooner they're going to feel better about what's coming after graduation. So it does take time in a job search. And 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 so students really do need to kind of get that process started a little bit um, so that they can have success sooner. As I mentioned earlier, though, uh, I think I mentioned like a roommate situation. If you got the roommate who might have uh, already got has the summer internship. We have some students who are rooming with accounting majors. Some some of those get those very those offers very early, both internships and full time jobs, can be a little stressful. Uh, 
each area, each industry, each major kind of has a different recruiting process. So try to alleviate some of that stress and say, not every major is going to have a summer opportunity or a full-time job a year ahead. That doesn't happen with everybody. Uh, So we kind of try to explain what that process is to kind of reduce that stress. But again, listening for those cues of where is their stress, I think that's that's probably going to be very helpful. And then, you know, I don't want to overwhelm you with all of this. If you leave with nothing more than knowing we've got some things on our career website that might be helpful, and there is a team of people here in the office that would love to help your student, that's good. Um, But just being able to refer them to some of those things or like, oh, you know, I got that parent newsletter and it said the career fairs are coming up. What's all that? That's all that about. Are you going to that? Something like that would be probably helpful. Um, Knowing that there are some events that pop up. Some of them are in the different colleges, too. Some of the colleges have events, too. Um, And then sometimes we work with those uh, academic departments and putting these things together. Got a great couple of alumni events this semester um, in some of the different academic departments. It's always fun to see alumni come back and share what they've been able to do and and their words of wisdom. Um, So those are some of the things that I I think would be, you know, possibly very helpful for your student. So um, at this time, I'm going to put up some information there if you need that information and see if we've got some questions that I can help uh, answer or facilitate. We sure do. Okay. Um, let's start with, is it possible for first year students, freshmen to get summer internships? That's a great question. It is possible. Sometimes it depends on the academic area. Uh, some academic areas, there's there is uh, a need to have certain higher level classes to be able to do some of those internships. So sometimes that, that doesn't happen until their junior year. However, uh, some employers are very interested in building that relationship early with students. So first years can get internships. They can go on Handshake, look at who's coming to the fair, and there is a, a whole search function, and they can search for uh, internships, who's looking for internships, and what year and what major, so they can find those employers that are open to that. But it is possible. Great. Um, when is the cast night? Mm, great. That is February 20th. So that is the day of the um, all-major internship and career fair. That fair goes from 1 to 5. And the CAST networking night is from 6 to 8, 6 to 7.30 in the evening, uh, right after the fair. So employers will move right over from that fair. Um, and again, that's a focus on employers that are open to all majors. So we're getting a good diversity um, in, in uh, hiring practices with that group of employers. Wonderful. Um Will, can they find information about SparkFest on the CCES website? Uh, You know, it's not up yet. I think we're still um, landing on a date, but it will be on our website. It will be on there um, during, in our events. It will also be in the College of Creative Arts website as well. Um, But that, 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 I think this is like the third or fourth year they've done SparkFest and it typically falls in that uh, mid to late April timeframe. Students share their work kind of like an open fair. Um, and then employers come, we usually have a lunch with the employers and then we walk them over there so they can kind of go and meet the students. And then we're also trying to kind, kind of figure out if we can do it like a more of a, a networking night because students are busy showing their their goods and their and, and selling their beautiful artwork. Um, and so we're, we're hoping to get that too. So that, that will be late April or mid to late April, but it will be on our website. Sounds very cool. Um, Specifically asking um, if you offer assistance for sports-related fields, such as sports marketing or sports management, and a similar question about uh, career advising for architecture students and where to find those advisors. Sure. So the sports um, uh, industry, uh, we have that fair actually in the fall. Um, So that was in October. That does not mean that students wouldn't have access to those employers and we could help them connect with them, even though the fair happened in the fall. We had a great turnout. This is like the Bengals came this year, which is the first time I was so excited. So we have some great connections there. And so if your student did not get to attend that in the fall this year, and but wants to connect with them, I would suggest they come in to meet with their advisor. There are two advisors they might be meeting with in that college. 
and um, can show them how to find those employers to reach out and connect with them. But keep that in mind for next fall if they haven't graduated yet. Um, it's called SEEN. Uh, and I'm not going to be able to say what the acronym is. You know, Miami's favorite, f- famous for it. So something, something about sports, careers, event and net, network. I'm not going to, it's sports careers, but that, that, that's a great resource. Um, and then for net or for the architecture, that is the career advisor for that kind of is responsible for the um, College of Creative Arts. Uh, her name is um, Sarah, and she would be she would show up in your student's um, handshake profile if they schedule an appointment with her, or they can email or call the career office, and we will send you Sarah's information so they can connect with that. Um, but she is she works closely with the architecture fair development and actually does a portfolio kind of development. Um, prep workshop before the architecture fairs to help students make sure that that's uh, portfolio is ready to go. Although the architecture department does a pretty good job of that too, but she does that with some employers to give their advice on portfolios as well. So that comes right before the architecture fair. Did I hit all that? You got it. Okay. Okay. A few more questions. Okay. Um, if a student would like to do career stalking, as you said, uh, how does she get advice on how to do that? Yeah. So I usually say first thing, they're going to need a, a LinkedIn profile. Um, and I, I, I really encourage students to create that profile so that they can connect and people can see their profile. But sometimes if they just want a career stock and not share their profile, they can do that without having that complete profile. So they need to get that LinkedIn profile. Then I think the first thing they need to do is... Um, with, you know, if they have their Miami information connected to that, their Miami email, they will then be able to click on um, the Miami University LinkedIn site. We have our own site. And on that Miami University LinkedIn profile is a tab that says alumni. And when they click on that, they will get access to, it's like 170,000 uh, Miami alumni that are on LinkedIn. And they can search, uh, there's a little search box at the top. They can search by major or city um, company, um, however they want to. And those little profiles will pop up and then they just kind of read through them, you know, based on what they've put in that keyword search. You know, if the, if it's by major, let's look at these people that majored in, um, you know, English and see what they're doing. Um, and I think that's, that's probably the best way to start. The other, the flip way of doing career stalking is if they have a target organization, let's say children's hospital is something that they really would like to work um, for someday, they can look at children's website and look at all the people at children's who have LinkedIn profiles and see all the different types of positions that are in children's hospital. And that kind of helps them identify other things besides, you know, the, the obvious doctor nurse uh, type of positions, which I think is helpful. I got a request to put that into chat and I don't know that I can translate that that fast. Um, <laughs> So I think most students will be savvy enough in social media to parse to, to, to fuddle with all of those things. And I think if they need help or want help, they can schedule with the peer career advisor or their career advisor. Absolutely. They can even okay. just drop in with a peer career coach and, and talk with them about that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, or if you have my email, if somebody wants to follow up with me, I'm happy to, to talk them through that later. Thank you. Okay. Um, recommendations for out-of-state students. Um, do the career fairs have, they're particularly referencing Boston and Massachusetts, but do the career fairs represent more than Ohio local folks? Um, and if not, where do they, if they don't, if their area is not represented, what should they do? Right. Great question. And that happens, you know, quite often. We have students who are either want to go home or want to try something besides Ohio. So um, I, first of all, yes, we do have employers that attend the fair that are um, representing other states. Quite often, it's more of a local organization that might have a facility or a branch um, um, in a different area. And they can speak to that or they can give the student the contact for the Boston area, for example. So it's it still can be a good connection. Um, I think one of the things for people in different locations is really first to, you know, look at target organizations in that area. 
Are, are there some that they're familiar with that they know they want to connect with? And even doing the LinkedIn thing where I said, if there's a Boston area organization that they're targeting, look that up on LinkedIn, look at that page to see who works there, and then search Miami University to find Miami alumni who might be in that organization in Boston, because that's a very common place that people like to go. So Boston, the New York, Chicago, Denver, those are some of the most popular places for our alumni that you might find organizations that have some alums that they could connect with in that area. But I do think those other cities, it does make sense to rely more on the networking um, and rely more on kind of the organizations that you might want to uh, target. I would say that we have a lot of, uh, you know, national positions in Handshake. That is that is open up all across the country. So it's very easy for someone to go in there and look for opportunities in the Boston area, for example, and those positions will pop up. So employers all over the country are putting them in Handshake. So students do have a lot more options that way as well. But I, I would not... I would not cross off the career fairs because we do have organizations that might be helpful too. Great. Speaking of handshake, mm -hmm. um, are students in handshake when they're searching for internships or careers, are they limited by their major? Is there a toggle they can turn off to open that up or to, to turn it on and focus in on something? Yeah, that's a great question. So Handshake does work like LinkedIn. Students can make it work for them by putting in what they're looking for, the types of positions, et cetera, to kind of make it work for them. Um, it does not limit them to what they can see as far as positions. However, if they see a position in an internship, they're going to notice a box on that that tells them if they are qualified and if it's like, do they have the GPA requirement? It'll say yes or no. Do they have the major that's required? Yes or no. So they can see that in there, but it won't block that response from them. Now, I usually say to students, if if they don't have the major that is listed, um, and that's becoming less of an issue because more employers are really opening it up and they'll just say all majors because they're looking for the candidate that they want with the skills they have, not necessarily content. We know there's some majors that you have to be, you know, I want my nurse to be a nursing major, I'm sorry. Uh, but the other things like that are very much more open. So students can go ahead and, and uh, apply for that position, maybe not through Handshake, but they can go to the website and apply for that position. And then I would, I would uh, coach them to write something in the cover letter about why they're interested in that position and how they feel they, they fit with that um, to show that, that, the major is not constraining them, but it won't block them from seeing it. It may block them from applying. Great. And so the, the next question here is uh, resources or shared job boards shared with other universities. And this is, that is handshake, right? Like this is, that's our tool. Yes, that is, that is our tool. That's the one that we use. Now that doesn't mean that we don't encourage students to also job search with LinkedIn or indeed um, some other sites, maybe more related to a certain industry or profession, uh, but Handshake is the first one. The Handshake is the one that employers are using to get college students. So, you know, a senior can look and say, okay, I'm qualified for this because these, these uh, employers are looking for recent graduates, people who are just about to graduate. Amazing. Is there a time frame? Speaking of when employers are looking and what they're doing, is there a time frame uh, when they, when like the the final uh, employers start finalizing summer internships and like when that wraps up and when maybe they've missed a boat? Yeah, honestly, um, with summer internships, I don't think there is a final time other than maybe June. I've seen people looking for internships or posting things that may have just been created, and so they're looking for the last minute at the end of the spring semester. In general, I try to encourage students to look for a summer opportunity starting in January to give them that semester to look. Um, there are some internships, though, for summer that employers are, are hiring or looking for in fall. So it's a whole cycle before they hire their summer internships. Not everything, but that's why I said that sometimes roommates are going to say, hey, guess what? I got my summer internship and I'm good to go. Um, and other students are like, what? I don't even see any internships for me. Generally, employers will post a semester before they need an intern. Um, and so, you know, now is the time to start getting uh, start getting things together and looking because the they have started posting those, but they can still find things late late spring. Great. And what do you think a good number 
Um, how many how many internships should a student apply for, particularly as a rising junior, but mm-hmm. broadly, like how many how many should be how many nets should they be should they be casting? Right, right. That's a that's a tough question um, because industries are going to differ. I usually say, you know, throw, throw as as many as you see that you're interested in, throw those out at at first. That could be 10, that could be 15, um, maybe more than that, that first round, but usually in that five to 10, 15 range of things that you're really interested in. You say, I like that. I want to apply. And then um, see what kind of nibbles you get. Um, are you are you hearing back? That's a great test to see, are my documents saying what I want them to say? Am I connecting with these? And if you're not hearing anything, we usually say, come in and let, let us look at your documents. Let us check through. Let us see where you're looking for these positions. Um, and then I usually say it might be time to ignite, not just by throwing out more applications. It's time to connect. We need to get you connected with people who are internship supervisors or um, employers or um, alumni who might be able to help to start to kind of ignite that process. Instead of being one in 200 applications for an uh, internship, let's see if we can make a warmer connection to help help that move that along. Because uh, it's it is time consuming. Those applications, those you know, sending out the resumes, keeping track of everything. So I wouldn't want to overwhelm them, but I'd say that's a good start to to kind of see how the search is progressing. Great. The next question is a little bit more of like students. They have students getting ghosted, right? Mm-hmm. Not getting respond. Just lot zero responsiveness from employers. Yeah. Um, you you answered this a little bit because you built that out a little bit more of like. What's the first step? Should they go to B- BMOC or should they be coming into a peer coach? Yeah. Like sort of what are the things that they, and maybe some other things that they can do? Sure. Well, I think first and foremost, they, we can't do any kind of search without a resume. And so I would start with that. And I would say, depending on your student, if they're more of a, a kind of do it on my own type of person, I would think starting with our, our website and looking at the the stages and how to develop or how to update that type of resume, that's a great place to start. If they're more like, I need to, I need someone to kind of guide me or give me suggestions, or I need that kind of personal connection, I would definitely have them come in for a peer career coach or their career advisor to kind of get that started. But the the resume is probably the first piece that also helps them kind of take inventory of their skills and what maybe what experiences they're looking for. Then I would say the next is to really kind of you know, dive in, um, just look at, you know, spend, can they spend half an hour, you know, every other day looking at handshake internships, just kind of scrolling through to see which ones are connecting with them, which ones they like, they can favorite them and save them. They don't have to apply right away, but let's say, okay, these are the ones I'm interested in to kind of get that, that ball rolling. Um, and I would say, you know, the other thing would probably be the networking piece, which, uh, if you need to use a safer word, that connection piece, because that is really going to help a lot of students. Um, and it's it takes a little time to build a relationship. You know, if we find some alumni we want them to reach out to to, to have a conversation with, it's not going to happen tomorrow. They're going to reach out. That alum might not see it until Friday. Then they respond and they set up a time. Now we're talking two, three weeks out. So because of that, I think that's probably the next piece I'd work in there is the networking piece um and then and just continue to to keep looking and 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 finding things that you want i do think at some point there needs to be a pause and am i getting any nibbles um because that is that is the checkpoint to see if this is working and if not we might need to regroup and redistribute but i think and i think that's the question of yeah. at heart here is oh. like they're not getting nibbles is oh, they're not coming. Getting yeah like they're throwing out nets and throwing out lines and nothing's oh, coming I would, back i would have someone check their documents we would okay. love to be that person uh faculty sometimes are great uh resources if they're close with their faculty but if they're not getting nibbles i would i would definitely have someone check those because sometimes it's just a matter of you know, missing the boat on putting keywords in there, missing uh, kind of that that enthusiasm for this is what I want. And maybe it's, you know, we need to find somebody in that, that company. Uh, because again, if they're one in 200 applications, how do we get them in there? And so it might be talking to an alum who can help with that. But yeah, if they're, if they're not getting any nibbles, I would definitely have them talk. Okay. Right. And the schedule or to reach out to come to come see you all for help okay. in that space. Um, it's they can email the career center. There's an online thing for appointments. How do they do that? Yeah, they. I mean, if, if they're not familiar with Handshake 
and they're struggling with that, I would have them either email or just drop by the office and say, hey, I'm a um, whatever major, ETBD, or that's, I shouldn't say that one, um, like a marketing major, English major. Um, sure. Whatever. whatever my major is. And then we will email the person with their their email and we will set that up. And then we'll show them how to do that in the future. Okay. But if they know Handshake, they can go in to their Handshake account and click on Career Center. Perfect. And it will take them right to set up appointment. And they just pick the time and the day that works for them. And it's all set up. It and, all, person. and all your offices are located in Armstrong on that lower level. Uh, yes. We also have uh, career advisors over in uh, Farmer, too. Um, one of our goes back and forth. But, yeah, so you they need to look at the location. But, yeah, all of them are right here in uh, Armstrong. There you go. That looks like the last question, Beth. I've gotten a lot of notes in here uh, of appreciation on how helpful this information is, how helpful you have been. Yeah. Um, lots of folks who are excited to help their students and help and excited to help alleviate some of the anxiety their students might be feeling at this moment. Yeah. Um, and so thank you, Beth, for taking the time. Thank you all for attending. Um, and we will have this up and posted and shared as soon as we can. Great. Okay. Thank you. So thank you. Thank all. you all.